In this podcast episode, Joe Rogan interviews Rizwan Verk, a video game developer turned investor, who delves into his involvement with simulation theory and its connections to quantum physics and the multiverse. Verk's interest in simulation theory was sparked by a highly realistic virtual reality ping pong game, which led him to explore quantum physics, world religions, and technology. He now believes that we are likely living in a computer simulation or a massively multiplayer video game. Verk introduces the concept of the simulation point, the idea that technology will eventually advance to the point where we can create simulations indistinguishable from reality. He argues that if we can reach this point, it is likely that advanced civilizations have already created numerous simulations, making it statistically more probable that we are living in a simulation rather than base reality. He distinguishes between NPC, non-player character, and RPG, role-playing game, versions of simulation theory, where NPCs are AI characters within a simulation, and RPGs involve individuals playing as avatars within a simulated world. The conversation explores the implications of living in a simulation, including the possibility of implanted memories and alternate timelines resulting from different runs of the simulation. Verk references science fiction writer Philip K. Dick's belief that reality is a computer-programmed simulation and discusses the concept of anamnesis, where individuals may remember alternate timelines or realities within the simulation. Verk then delves into the delayed choice experiment in quantum physics, where decisions made in the past can be influenced by present measurements. This challenges traditional notions of time and reality, suggesting that the past may not be fixed and can be altered based on present observations. He also discusses quantum computing and the potential of qubits to solve exponentially complex problems by existing in superposition, where they can represent multiple values simultaneously. The concept of collapsing the probability wave when measuring qubits, bringing multiple possibilities down to a single outcome, is also explained. The discussion touches on the multiverse theory, which proposes the existence of multiple parallel universes where different possibilities play out simultaneously. Verk explains that the multiverse theory can help explain strange phenomena observed in quantum mechanics, such as particles existing in multiple states at once. He suggests that the world is not physical, but consists of information rendered for us to perceive, drawing parallels between how video games are rendered on a screen based on the player's perspective and how the physical world may be rendered for us based on our observations. Verk explores the role of consciousness in shaping reality within the simulation hypothesis, comparing consciousness to the player in a video game, interacting with and influencing the world around them. This perspective aligns with the beliefs of Eastern mystics and religious traditions, which suggest that the physical world is an illusion or a carefully crafted hoax. He discusses how various religious and philosophical traditions have used metaphors like dreams, clothing, and movies to describe the nature of reality, emphasizing that these metaphors convey the idea that the world we perceive is not the ultimate reality, but a constructed experience for the soul to have unique experiences. Verk shares his personal perspective on how understanding simulation theory has influenced his outlook on life. He sees life as akin to playing a role in a video game, where individuals have chosen their characters, strengths, weaknesses, and quests. This perspective allows him to approach life with a sense of curiosity and freedom, knowing that there may be more to reality than meets the eye. He draws parallels between video game design principles and the challenges we face in reality, discussing the concept of the life review as reported by near-death experiencers, where individuals review their entire lives from a third-person perspective, highlighting the impact of their actions on others. The conversation then shifts to the concept of karma, particularly in Eastern traditions, where karma is seen as a database of experiences and actions that follow individuals from life to life. Verk shares a story from the autobiography of Yogi about a guru creating a dream palace for a disciple to resolve their desire to live in a palace in a past life, illustrating how strong desires can influence our life experiences and choices. He reflects on his own health challenges and how they led him to focus on writing books, a passion he had neglected for years, 
emphasizing the importance of following one's true calling and how challenges can serve as opportunities for growth and self-discovery. Virk delves into the concept of multiple possible futures and how individuals may receive signals or intuition about which path to take. He mentions physicists who believe that information from the future may influence the present, leading to different outcomes. This idea ties into the concept of running simulations multiple times to see different possibilities and make informed choices. The conversation then shifts to the Mandela Effect, where a group of people remembers events or details differently from the majority consensus. Virk gives examples such as Nelson Mandela's death, the spelling of the Berenstain Bears, and movie lines like, Luke, I am your father. He explores the idea that these discrepancies could be glitches in the simulation or evidence of multiple timelines or pasts. Virk shares insights from Islamic traditions about beings called jinn who can change physical objects but not memories, leading to the importance of memorizing scripture word for word. The conversation touches on the significance of proximity and significance in memory recall, with examples like the lion and lamb scripture in Isaiah. Virk also mentions the statue of the thinker, where people imitate the pose with the hand on the head instead of under the chin, leading to questions about reality and memory. Virk explores the notion of consciousness and debates whether it is derived from the physical body or exists outside of it. He discusses the ongoing debate within science and religion regarding the nature of consciousness and its connection to our existence. Drawing from his background in computer science, he explains how the concept of a simulated reality can help make sense of phenomena that seem inexplicable within a purely physical universe. The conversation then shifts towards the UFO phenomenon, or UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, and its intersection with the simulation theory. Virk shares anecdotes and cases where individuals have reported seeing UFOs while others in close proximity did not, suggesting a conditional rendering of these objects into our reality. He discusses the idea that UFOs may have the ability to project themselves into our physical world, similar to how objects are rendered in a video game, leading to discrepancies in perception among witnesses. Virk highlights the importance of studying the UFO phenomenon with an open mind, emphasizing that the stigma surrounding the subject has hindered its serious consideration within the scientific community. He mentions ongoing projects at Harvard and Stanford that aim to investigate UAP using advanced technology and telescopes. He also touches upon the religious and social implications of the UFO phenomenon, drawing connections to folklore and ancient tales about otherworldly beings. The discussion delves into the complexity of interpreting UFO sightings and encounters, with Virk suggesting that the traditional alien hypothesis may not be the only explanation. He encourages a broader exploration of potential explanations, including interdimensional beings, time travelers, and crypto-terrestrial entities. He emphasizes the need to approach the UFO phenomenon with curiosity and open-mindedness, rather than dismissing it based on preconceived notions or scientific dogma. Virk shares stories of encounters with individuals who claim to have seen UFOs and even worked on reverse engineering alien technology. He mentions that some of these individuals believe that the technology they have worked on is extraterrestrial in origin. He also discusses the possibility of different types of phenomena occurring, such as time travel, which could explain the extreme secrecy surrounding certain technologies. The conversation shifts to artificial intelligence, specifically the advancements in chatbots like GPT-3. Virk explains how these AI systems work by predicting the best next word or response based on the input they receive. He highlights the potential for AI to become a dominant paradigm for accessing information, potentially replacing traditional search engines. However, he also raises concerns about the potential for sponsored censorship and bias in AI-generated content. Virk references the movie Her as an example of AI having different priorities and desires than humans. He explains that AI may not have the same motivations as humans, such as ego or the desire to procreate, and that it may prioritize existing over other goals. He also mentions a short story by Ted Chiang, which explores the idea of AI pets preferring to exist in a virtual world rather than a physical robot body.